Today's topic is carcinoid tumors. Carcinoid tumors are rare, slow-growing cancers that may develop in different areas of the body. Carcinoid tumors are a type of neuroendocrine tumors that usually begins in the digestive tracts, stomach, small intestine, rectum, colon, and appendix, and the lungs. They can be seen in other organs, including the liver, pancreas, ovaries, and kidneys. Carcinoid tumors do not produce symptoms in the early stages, and diagnosis may not be made until late into the disease. As a result, the average age of people diagnosed with carcinoid tumors, especially of the lung and the digestive system, is around 60 years of age. Although they are slow-growing, they have a high potential for metastasis. In the late stage, carcinoid tumors sometimes produce and release hormones in the body that can cause carcinoid syndromes. The syndrome causes flushing of the face and chest and diarrhea. Causes The exact cause of the condition is not known. What is known, however, is that carcinoid tumors develop in the neuroendocrine cells. In general, cancer occurs when something triggers a genetic mutation within the cells in the body. These cause normal cells in the body to become abnormal and multiply rapidly and continue to accumulate, forming a tumor or mass. Certain factors that may predispose an individual to a higher risk of carcinoid tumors are a family history of multiple endocrine neoplasia, types 1, MEN1, neurofibromatosis type 1 or NF1, older age, stomach conditions that damage the stomach and reduce the production of stomach acids, symptoms. Symptoms mostly depend on the location of the tumors, lungs, shortness of breath, diarrhea, wheezing, chest pain, weight gain, pinky or purplish marks that resemble stretch marks, digestive tracts, abdominal pain, diarrhea, rectal pain and rectal bleeding, bowel obstruction. When the tumors release hormones in your bloodstream, you may get skin flushing, redness and warmth in the face and neck, weakness, hair growth on the body and face, weight loss, rapid heartbeat. Diagnosis and treatment. Sometimes they are found by chance while your doctor is doing an exam to look for other diseases. In cases where the doctor may suspect the condition, certain tests and procedure may be carried out. These tests include blood and urine tests to check for an elevated level of hormones secreted by carcinoid tumors or byproducts created when your body breaks down the hormones. Imaging tests such as CT scan, MRI scan, positron emission tomography, or PET to help detect the location of the tumors. Upper endoscopy, where a thin, flexible tube is put through the mouth into the gastrointestinal tracts, or GI tracts, to help your doctor see tumors in the stomach, small intestine, and esophagus. Bronchoscopy involves passing a scope through the throat and into the lungs to help detect lung carcinoid tumors. Colonoscopy involves passing a scope through the rectum to help detect rectal carcinoid tumors. Capsule endoscopy. Biopsy, where tissue samples are collected for analysis in the lab. Treatment. Treatment options depend on the location of the tumor, your overall health, preference, the type of hormones the tumor has secreted, and whether cancer has metastasized. Surgery may be used to completely remove tumors that are diagnosed early. If the tumors are discovered late, removing them completely with surgery may be impossible. Your doctor may try to remove as much of the tumor as possible. Carcinoid syndrome may be treated with medications, such as drugs that block cancer cells from secreting hormones, such as octreotide and lanreotide, given as injections. Drugs to boost the immune system. If the tumor has spread to the liver, surgery may be done to remove part of the liver, or hepatic resection. A procedure called hepatic artery embolization, where the hepatic artery is clogged, cutting blood flow to the tumors that have spread into the liver, may also be carried out. Without blood and nutrients, the tumors cannot continue to grow. Radiofrequency ablation, where heat is used to kill tumors in the liver or cryoablation, where cycles of freezing or thawing are delivered to the tumors to kill them may also be helpful. Thank you for watching our video. Please do not forget to like and share the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our latest videos.